All right, we are going to talk about determining the age of rocks and why that's important. So after organisms die, we know some processes preserve these specimens or these organisms with little to no change, such as those that become trapped in tar, which is like a oil, ice, or amber. So ice, you remember we talked about the woolly mammoth that they found, the baby woolly mammoth that was trapped in ice for all those years. And then amber, this is one of those things from uh, Jurassic Park that actually is true in that organisms can get trapped in this sap, which eventually will become a hard rock-like substance like amber. Um, and this helps preserve the substance completely intact so it doesn't really decompose at all. Now the fossil record. Paleontologists, which are scientists who study and collect and classify uh, fossils, they look at all of the fossils that they find and their information um, is the fossil record and that provides evidence of the history of life on Earth, groups of organisms and how they change over long periods of time, and um, Earth's history um, as well as groups of organisms that change over long periods of time so we can see what the organism looked like way long time ago as well as what the organism looks like now. Um, what also gets trapped in those rocks is like different samples of gas so we know how much oxygen existed in the atmosphere when that rock was made and we know how much hydrogen existed. Um, we know how much carbon dioxide was there um, and that's how we can map the Earth's um, climate in the past and that's how we know we're currently going through global warming. It also allows us to look at past environments and changes in the earth's surface. So it allows us to see when it was really green because there'd be a lot of leaves fossilized or when it was covered in ocean because there'd be a lot more shells and marine type animals. So it allows us to really look at the history of the earth through these fossil records or through these layers of rock. Um, and this really supports our theory of evolution. And we kind of talked about that a little bit last time and we are going to review a little bit of what we were talking about when we talked about radio active dating. But first we're going to look at finding the age of rocks. So in order to determine what happened in Earth's history, we need to determine the age of a rock. And there are two ways that we do this, that we being scientists or just humans in general. Um, relative age of a rock, which is its age compared to other rocks, so it's either older or younger. When you do relative age, there's no number. Okay, no number. It's just, is it younger or older than this other rock? absolute age of a rock is the number of years since that rock is formed and we can figure that out using that technique of radioactive um, dating which you talked about when we talked about um, uh, what's in it or how, how old is that fossil that activity so let's talk about rate relative dating because this is a new concept for you guys um, the law of superposition um, is that in a horizontal sedimentary rock layer, the oldest is at the bottom, and that makes sense. So the oldest rock is going to be buried the deepest, and each layer of rock that is higher and higher above it is going to be younger and younger and younger, the youngest rock being at the surface. So to determine layers, uh, relative ages of rocks, geologists study the following things. So we study these things called extrusions. Understand, and if you remember, sedimentary rock is when uh, a lot of erosion has happened and that erosion has been compressed into rock over long periods of time. Extrusions, okay, is when metamorphic rock, or excuse me, igneous rock um, occurs, and that is when the lava hardens on the surface of the earth, so maybe via a volcano or something that has exploded, the lava has come onto the surface, and that lava hardens into this igneous rock. Intrusions is the magma that cools and hardens into a mass of igneous rock beneath the surface. So when magma rises in the Earth's surface and then hardens because it cools, but doesn't actually make it onto the surface, it becomes these things called intrusions. So remember, extrusions, X means it has come out. Intrusions means still in the Earth. There are these things called faults, which I'm sure you've heard about when it comes to earthquakes. Um, faults are breaks in the Earth's crust, and um, it's always younger than the rock it cuts through. So when there is a fault that goes through a layer of rock, you know that that fault is younger than the rock that it is cut through. Because obviously, if that rock it cut through didn't exist before, there would have been nothing to cut through. So understand that the fault is going to be younger than the rock around it. 
And then you have unconformities. This is a gap in a geological record, that means layers of rock, where some rock layers have been lost because of erosion. And we're going to look at some examples of what this might look like. And maybe the next time, because I can see these now, when I drive through the mountains and I look up at the big canyon walls, you can sometimes see some of these things in there and you can be like, oh, I see it now and I understand how we've dated certain things. So intrusions versus extrusions. So you'll notice here, okay, this is a layer of hardened lava. Now notice that it is flat, long layer like this, okay, that means it has erupted out onto the surface and has settled into a flat layer of rock. And so this is an extrusion. This is also an extrusion. So that means there must have been an active volcano around during when these two layers were made. Also understand from what I said earlier, this down here is the oldest layer, the next oldest, the next oldest, getting younger, younger than the previous one, young, almost the youngest, and the youngest. So understand that and you can look at the changes of organisms that lived there during that time. Notice that these tend to be marine mammals and then all of a sudden we have a volcano and now we have paw prints and leaves. So there must be some land that has now developed um, here in this fossil record. So um, here we're going to look at an intrusion. So see this right here? It isn't usually flat because it didn't ever actually explode and settle into a layer. All it did was it cut through the earth um, because it was rising and rising and rising. It cut through those rock layers and it has hardened. And that is what an intrusion is. So intrusions tend to look more like this, whereas extrusions look like this because they've made it onto the surface and settled out into a layer. Intrusions have just cut through rock layers and then hardened. Faults. This is probably a review from sixth grade, um, but understand that there are faults. And basically what happens is all of these rock layers that are in here are going to be older than this fault. So we can kind of date them because we know, oh, well, this fault must have formed after these layers were formed. Um, so that's a way to date things. And then unconformity. So you'll notice here we have this layer that's kind of on its side, and then it gets cut across by this other layer right here. This is called an unconformity. And that unconformity, notice that we've lost some of this sandstone right here, and we've lost all of these things right here. Okay, that's what happens is when we erode away because of ocean or wind or weather or water, whatever the case may be, we erode those layers away, new layers form on top of that, and you can kind of say, oh, well, this, these layers are younger than these layers because these layers came on top of those layers. So understand how to relatively date ages. Also, and this was something I talked about a little bit more, when you find organisms in them, if you can't actually know what the type of rock is or what it's made out of, you can look at the fossils in there and say, oh, well, I saw a bunch of these guys in this layer, so that means that this all must be one layer. Okay, and you'll be able to kind of look at trends about where things existed. And you can say, oh, well, this, fo or this seashell must have existed around the same time as this seashell. This seashell existed the same around time as this seashell. So it's relative dating in that you can say, well, these um, organisms lived more recently than these organisms, which lived more recently than these organisms. So understand that. Um, index fossils. So this is a big idea in relative dating. So certain fossils, called index fossils, must be widely distributed. Okay, that means they're all over the place. They existed all over the world, so we can see them everywhere that we look. And they represent a type of organism that existed only for a brief um, period of time in Earth's history. Essentially, we know when that time was, and so anytime we find that organism, we can say, this rock is this old. Okay, that's how we know. We know it's older than all the rest of these layers above it. We know that it has this organism, so it is specifically this old. And they tell us exactly what the relative ages of those rock layers that they're found in when they were formed. So this is the big geologic time scale. And this is a big thing that we're going to go more and more into, but there's um, eons and eras and periods and epochs, which you will... 100% um, see more of when we talk about this next time, but this is just an idea of what you're going to be looking at. 
Okay, so absolute age. So this is something we've already talked about. The absolute age of something is the number of years since the rock formed. So geologists use radioactive dating. Remember, we talked about that on the green sheet to determine the absolute ages of rocks, meaning how old in years is this rock. And they first determine how much of a radioactive element um, exists in the rock. Remember, we talked about carbon-14, and carbon-14 had that half-life of um, 5,700 years. So an element is all atoms of a particular um, matter are the same, so all of them are carbon atoms, and they all decay. So they all process um, and break down into an unstable element until they keep breaking down into a more stable element until they're all gone. Okay, they will be all gone. Um, and if you don't remember what radioactive decay is in the process, re-watch the video on um, how old is that fossil. It will be very helpful for you for this. Um, there's also, like we talked about in that same video, the half-life, how long it takes for half of that element to decay, to radioactively decay into something else. So yeah, I hope that makes sense. Please let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.